Ready? Mm -hmm. Hello everybody and welcome to TansyReviews.com First episode in 2017 Yes, I'm probably too excited for this video, but hey, it's 2017 and a lot of great things are coming and I'm excited about 2017. Not that 2016 was terrible, but I'm just really excited about the new year. Uh, I'm just optimistic, I guess. Um, today we are doing a tasting, not 100% blind, but it is a blind tasting. I do know that all these wines are Pinot Noir. Well, I decided to spill the beans on those so that we could talk about Pinot Noir in the video um, and learn a little bit about Pinot Noir. And also, I kind of know where these wines came from. I know that they either came from Trader Joe's or Aldi. Um, Aldi is a supermarket much like Trader Joe's. If you don't know what Trader Joe's is, we'll talk about that too. But Aldi is just another one of those stories that's super saver. They get, um, uh, they export directly from suppliers similar to Trader Joe's, but Aldi takes it a step further. It's not very fancy. There's uh, very little employees there. You have to put a quarter in to get your cart, but you put your cart back in, you get the quarter back so they don't have to have somebody go out in the parking lot. So it's a really cool store, really um, focused on saving, but the quality there has been amazing. And as we've been going through the website and doing reviews, some of the wines from Aldi, have, all of them have gotten 90 plus points and we've been really excited about their wines. Um, and so in the past, that was kind of the same thing for Trader Joe's. So what I wanted to do is say, hey, let's do them blind. So I don't know which ones are Trader Joe's or which ones are Aldi. They've mixed them all up. And, you know, I said, let's just do a tasting and kind of see who's kind of got what going on. Are they both producing great stuff or is it just me? So without further ado, let's talk about Pinot Noir and let's talk about um, great savings and great bang for buck value. All right, wine number one, let's go ahead and look at it first. It's a red color with a, a tan hue. By hue, I mean, I'm just looking simply at the kind of the tip of the wine here. I don't know if you can see that on the thing, but just when you look at your wine, if you hold it kind of at an angle where you're not spilling the wine and you look just right here at this top portion of the wine, that's where the true color is. And this wine's kind of that reddish tan color, kind of like a red straw color. Um, let's get the Aroma, 75% of what you taste comes from what you smell. So the smell is very, very important. So we always spend a lot of time smelling wines in the Tansy household. This wine right here, uh, on first sniff, cherry, definitely cherry. Just like a stray cherry that you buy, not a maraschino cherry or anything like that, but it's cherry that you buy from the store, fresh cherry, you bite into it, you have the pit. That is exactly what this wine smells like. It smells just like a cherry that you've been into. And you can maybe, even if you can imagine what the pit of a cherry would smell like, I even kind of get that aroma as well off the wine. So cherry and the cherry pit. But uh, that's a very classic smell for Pinot Noir. It's kind of what it's supposed to smell like. They always smell like red fruits. So raspberry, cranberry, cherry, sometimes black cherry, depending on where it's from. But you're not really ever going to get black fruits like you would in Cab or Zen. You're not going to get any blueberry, blackberry, any strawberry. Um, it's always going to be those lighter red fruits, cherry, raspberry, cranberry. And on this wine, just very nice, fresh cherry, not really much else. On the palate, this wine is a, I would say, light to medium body. It's a very light style Pinot Noir with very fresh, enjoyable fruit. Not a lot of influences from outside, so not a lot of oak or anything like that. This is just pure... Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is the name of the grape varietal. Sorry if I didn't catch that. But Pinot Noir is the name of the grape. And there's nothing in these wines except Pinot Noir grapes. They're not, you know, they don't add these things that I'm talking about. There's no cherry or anything like that in the glass. But uh, this wine um, is just definitely fresh cherry fruit. It's very good. Light to medium body. Medium plus acidity. There is some really good acidity. I would say this is probably an excellent food pairing wine. I could see this definitely um, going with a nice uh, salad with cranberry or a nice uh, Cornish game hen with chicken. Pinot Noir is so versatile and this would even go great with just a nice brie cheese. Most Pinot Noir goes really well with cheeses so this is a very fun wine. I don't think that's very complex. It's not over the top, probably in that $10 price range, $9, $10 price range, but very good at that price range. Very good for that $10 price point. All right, let's go on to wine number two. Wine number two, just looking at it, a little bit more tan, more tannish brown red. So like reddish brown, very light. I don't know if you can see it, if not, I'm sorry, I apologize, you'll have to go by the wine and see it for yourself. But I mean, I'm telling you what, Pinot Noir is so cool to look at. It's because you can see through it, um, it's just neat. It just looks good in all different lights. Sometimes I just like to hold it up and look at it. Maybe I'm weird, but it, I don't know, it's such a captivating wine to look at. 
Okay, on the nose, 100% different uh, than wine number one. This wine right here, just loads of char and smoke and oak, uh, which is something we can kind of talk about. Uh, this this wine, uh, wine number one is very old world in its approach, um, meaning that uh, there's two styles of wine if you want to make wine simple. There's old world and new world. And simply put, that new world is wines that were uh, made after kind of like the scientific revolution. Um, and anything that old world was made before science. So in the new world, I don't know, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492 to the new world. So you can kind of think of it that way. Wine countries that have been producing wines for 100 or 200 years versus thousands and thousands of years um, before science had an introduction. So your old world wines are tend to be very little influence. It's just kind of the emphasis on the farmer and the grapes, whereas new world, they've got all the science. They can put it in oak barrels and they can blend it with different grapes from different regions, stuff like that. They can't really do that too much in the old world. So on the nose of this wine, it screams new world. There's just a lot of oak going on, a lot of outside influences on this wine. I don't really smell much fruit maybe a little bit of vanilla and even a little bit of black cherry, but more so just this charring of this oak barrel, which is cool. You know, it's cool. It's smoky and oaky. It gives you something to talk about. And on the palate, that's what you get. Smoke, oak, charring, a little bit of cherry and vanilla. Again, it's cool to talk about. It, it gives you and your friends something that you can relate to. I mean, anybody can put this in their mouth and immediately taste that smoking and that charring, and that's really cool. But to me, it takes away from the fruit and and maybe might make it a little bit trickier to pair with food. I would say that this would probably go good with maybe like a black and white style of a fish. Um, you know, even some of your you know smokier cheeses that they have. Um, out there, maybe even like Humboldt Fog or something like that would maybe be kind of cool with this Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir pairs with all sorts of cheeses. It's kind of fun. But um, this wine, probably in the New World, very smoky and charry. I will say that, um, you know, probably in that 10 to $12 price range. But again, not too much fresh, clean, vibrant fruit, which I kind of like in my Pinot Noir, to be honest with you. But that's just me. I'm just one man's palate. All right, so we're getting back down to earth. And this wine right here, when you're talking about new world and old world, this is probably going to be something in the old world because I can't smell it. It's so hard, I'm reaching here. I mean, there's really not much to smell in this wine, which makes it less fun on the smell, but we'll see what it tastes like. But on smell alone, it kind of smells like a brown paper bag and maybe a little bit of raspberries, but raspberries are kind of hard to smell. Anyway, if you ever bite into a raspberry, you have to really get it up on your nose to smell it. And that's what this wine kind of smells like, kind of brown paper bag and raspberry. Hey, I might be way wrong. Who knows? Mmm. On the palate, completely different than what it smells like. Very, very fresh, juicy kind of fruit. Um, very juicy raspberry. A little bit of red cherry in there, but very, very juice forward wine without any influence of that oak and craziness. So you really what you're getting here is just fresh, good wine that don't have a lot of influences to talk about. Whereas this other one might, the grapes might not have been, they might have been adequate grapes, so they had to put them in an oak barrel to make them cool and unique. This wine right here was probably made with really good grapes, and so you kind of don't have to have all that other stuff to talk about in the wine. I really enjoy this wine. This is kind of, I'm kind of digging this. Yeah, again, just raspberry, cherry, maybe a little touch of black cherry on there. Um, medium plus acidity, so not not very high acidity, but there's definitely some uh, acidity come down here, making my tongue salivate a little bit. It's a little bit hot from the alcohol, um, but a really good, probably another good food pairing wine. I'm digging that one. All right, let's go on to the last one. And this one is just a soft pink. So soft red with a pink hue, like almost kind of like a rosé style uh, color on it. Put it up there close for you to see it. You don't have to zoom in on it if you don't want to. But man, again, it's such a cool color. Just star bright. You kind of see the lights just glimmering off my hand. I don't know. Sorry, maybe I just get way into the looks of Pinot Noir. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very cool. 
again, all these wines are all Pinot Noir, but they all smell so different uh, with just, you know, s subtle similarities. Think about pizza. You know, like when we talk about pizza, you know, you can pick out Papa John versus Domino's versus Pizza Hut. It's just one of those things. It's all the same ingredients, but you can tell the difference between Papa John's and Domino's. You just can do it. And that's the way this wine is. You can just kind of pick out these subtle differences, even though it's all generally the same. And so on this wine, you gotta have to stay with me here, but I get forced for maybe a little bit of mushroom even, which uh, I know doesn't sound good, but it is cool. If you can imagine kind of uh, walking through um, the woods on the Blue Ridge Parkway uh, in the early fall when the leaves have fallen on the ground and maybe they're dry, but they just kind of have like a light dampness to them and really early in the morning. And you can kind of smell the leaves. Does that make sense? That's what this wine smells like. With subtle hints of cherry and raspberry. And like I said, I don't know if I said it in this video, but aromas are so important because 75% of what you taste comes from what you smell. So it's just so important to smell the wine. It just brings to the experience. I know a lot of people say, gosh, you look like an idiot when you keep smelling the wine. But man, I just, sometimes I can't, I can't stop doing it. I can swirl my coffee sometimes, it's embarrassing. Mm. So, fantastic. That was really good. Boy, the last two wines were really fun. So let's talk about this guy. Let me get one more sip of it. So this is that kind of cranberry and cherry thing going on. Uh, even again, a little bit of the black cherry going on, but a very bright and vibrant fruit. Minimum, well, a little bit of oak on here, a little bit of vanilla. Nothing like this guy over here, though. This has just got some really nice uh, vanilla to it. Um, you know, this might even be one of those like strange new world wines, but made in the old world style. I'm not sure because it's old world in its approach. You know, kind of this earthier characteristics but again they're powerful aromas and the fruit is so big so you know maybe this is uh something from oregon um uh something kind of up north all right so let's um let's go ahead and run through these one more time and just kind of rate them really quick and as i rate them we'll look at them all right on wine number one cherry cherry on the on the palate one thing i might have missed is there's a little bit of cola on there which is really cool too but really fun fruit probably in that 10 dollar price range i will say this is a solid 86 points um i enjoyed this wine i think it would go really well on the dinner table let's go ahead and take a look at it really quick lift the whole thing up you can lift the whole well oh, i can lift the whole thing up yep, man you're go. so good so oh broken cloud 2013 pinot noir sonoma coast uh i'm gonna have to be honest with you i know a little bit about this wine i didn't think i would because i don't drink that many wines from oldie uh, and uh, Trader Joe's, but Broken Cloud, and I can't remember which vintage. You hold it, it up. Exactly. Okay. But this wine, uh, wine enthusiasts rates about 20,000 bottles a day um, for their magazine and for their rating things. And out of those 20,000 bottles, they, uh, they rate um, only about 10% of them actually get like the best deal award or a great buy award and this wine happened to be one of those wines so really cool stuff i'd be curious to know how much that cost yeah i wrote it on the back i think and there's oh you did 12.99 and it's from aldi very very cool um 12.99 since that's, that's an exciting uh wine sonoma coast such a cool place just because of, of the coastal ridge line that traps the fog and it's just a very ideal place for growing pinot noir $12.99 is a very fair price for this. I thought the free fruit was very fresh and 86 points, you know, really tasty wine. Let's go on to wine number two. This was the Smoky Charioke guy. Um, you know, maybe you're a fan of that. Again, I'm one man's palate. I'm not a fan of that just because I think that they're trying to hide something. They're trying to hide the grape. So, you, you know, but if, again, it's a cool technique, you know, and, and it works. So I'm going to give this wine, you know, 80 83 points uh, um, just because it's just so smoky it's kind of over the top and I feel bad but and maybe it's for you again I'm one man's palate this is only my opinion let's see what it is okay so uh, cotillion cotillion Pinot Noir from Monterey County Santa Barbara County and Sonoma County so that's kind of similar 
regions that they pull grapes for uh, Miomi, which is really popular. Obviously, this doesn't taste anything like Miomi at all. Um, but nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and um, you know, I'll let you read the bottle. It says, you know, uh, it's just a blend of wines, but really, to me, it just was oak and smoke, thirteen percent alcohol, which is, you know, or thirteen point eight percent alcohol, which is, you know. A little high Pinot Noir. It's, you know, it's normal. Pinot Noir is using that 12 to 13 and a half percent. All right, sorry about that. Our card ran out of space. Hopefully, this one still have space. Let's go on to the fourth one. Um, the fourth one. Third. Third. Third one. Sorry. Third one was that kind of raspberry, cherry, maybe a little bit of cranberry. Oh, I really like this one. This was the one with the really, the kind of really juicy one. There's like really fresh juice, really fresh cherry juice on that. Really cool wine. I'm going to say 90 points on that one. I really like this third one. Let's see what it is. I'm excited about it. All right, $13.99 Trader Joe's. Simply just says Pinot Noir. Let's find it up here. Upper Eden Pinot Noir, which is in St. Lucia Highlands, which is uh, California. Um, very, very cool. $13.99, really good wine. I really enjoyed that wine. Um, very luscious though, very fruit driven. So definitely a crowd crowd pleaser at $90. $13.99 is a great price for that wine. Uh, really cool. Let's go on to the third one, the fourth one. All right, the fourth one was that one that was cool. It was kind of like that mushroom forest floor thing going on. There's big hints of raspberry. Um, again, a little bit more Floors 4, terroir-driven wine. Probably my my favorite out of the bunch because there's definitely this mushroom thing going on. Um, I'm going to go 90 points on it as well. I think this one is just, it's a little bit more complex, or this one is a lot more juicier, more com uh, crowd-pleasing. This one is more complex, kind of interesting and cool. There's a little bit more to talk about, so I'm still definitely in that 90 pri points price range. 90 points point range for that. Let's see what the bottle is. All right. Asha Ko Kawana, Russian River Asha Valley, Kona. Sonoma. Asha Kona. Asha Kona. Asha Kona. $9.99 from Aldi. Very cool. And it's from the Russian River Valley of Sonoma. So we've even broken it down further. So we had the first one was from Sonoma. Now we're in the Russian River Valley of Sonoma, which is just such a wonderful place for people. Anyway, $9.99 from Aldi. Extremely cool. Um, all these wines are really, really neat. They're all under the $15 price point. I think that you should read the blog below to kind of see what Aldi and Trader Joe is. But these were definitely cool wines and you can individually see them on our website as well. And uh, hopefully our next video of 2017 won't have so many camera difficulties. We need to go buy some new cards. But uh, what a fun and enjoyable tasting. I hope that you guys learned something from this. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. If you have anything that you want to tell us or ask us, please hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Remember, there is a time and a place for all beer, wines, and spirits. It's up to you to find the time. Till next time, cheers.